Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled, I'm a Mileage Plus member, and I paid 50,000 miles to fly as captain on this trip. Now, back in the mid to late uh, 90s, the uh, company was working very hard to get loyalty amongst the people who flew the airlines a lot, you know, the Mileage Plus programs, and they were offering them all sorts of cool little incentives, like they could go out to our training center and fly the simulators. They were handing out pilot's wings, which we didn't think too terribly much of because we worked really hard to get those wings, but they were giving them all sorts of benefits. So it wasn't unusual at all that um, a mileage plus person, other than, you know, just the standard upgrading from coach to first class, was getting all sorts of uh, interesting uh, benefits. Now, I was a line check airman on the 727 at the time, and we had a, uh, a gentleman, uh, a pilot I had known for a very long time, uh, Dan, who was a captain on the 727, who was being checked out as a line check airman. And one of the final processes in these whole thing was that I was to give him a, uh, a line check, basically, uh, to say that, hey, you do fine things as an LCA and you're signed off. That was kind of the final sign off. It was... Uh, more of a formality than anything because the, the training is very extensive. So um, I was just supposed to, to follow him uh, through on the flight setting in the jump seat. So I get there and I meet the crew at 727. So I meet the uh, second officer and the first officer and, uh, you know, explain what's going on. Uh, Dan had briefed the uh, first officer the previous day very extensively. So the first officer all ready to go. And we're just kind of waiting for Dan to show up. And it gets to be 45 minutes before. And Dan commuted in from Miami. So I'm thinking, well, maybe he was commuting in today and his flight was running late or something like that. And, uh, um, you know, I, I would uh, continue to wait. Well, it got to be 30 minutes before the flight. Now I'm starting to get concerned. And the uh, uh, our, our lady behind the desk there who she uh, back then they would print up your paperwork for you and hand it to you and all this stuff. So I, I asked her, I says, hey. Uh, and this is before cell phones. I said, um, could you give Dan a call on his phone, you know, and, and, and just see, uh, you know, if you can get a hold of him or that. So she calls and he answers and she says, you know, we have this trip. And when I hear her say, no, the trips today, I know, oh my gosh, we got a problem. He's still down in Miami. He thought the trip was the next day. So he hasn't come up. So I go, okay. I quick call the crew desk. I quick call dispatch. I go, Hey, Good news, bad news, uh, you don't have a captain LCA for this, and it needed to be an LCA to fly this. You could just couldn't pull somebody off reserve. Uh, it needed to be an LCA to fly as captain. So I said, hey, I can fly the trip. Uh, we're going down to like Florida and back. And I said, but you need to get an LCA for the, the next portion of the trip, but I'll cover you this, this first two legs because uh, I've got a trip tomorrow that I've got to fly. So I got that. I got the, the paperwork changed, so I was the captain on it. And I quickly signed it. Now, one, one thing I do on these, uh, because it can be confusing to the gate agents and the mechanics and everything like that, if you have two people show up and they're dressed as captain. Well, there's only one captain on the flight. So what's the second guy dressed up as a captain? Well, it causes confusion. So I would dress up just nicely in a, in a business suit. I would have a sports coat, nice shirt, and a tie. So I'm dressed up kind of as a civilian. And... This was back in the time when, uh, this is before 9-11, and if you wanted to board a, a flight that was already, you know, the door was open, if the door was closed, you entered your little code and you walked down onto the airplane. Uh, if the door was open, all you had to do was flash your ID, pilot ID, and you could walk right on, no questions asked. So, um, of course, this is running late. I'm, I'm getting there about 20 minutes beforehand. Uh, the, the crew knew who I was, um, but uh, nobody else really did. And uh, so I, I, I go up there quickly, flash the uh, ID to the uh, the agent uh, taking tickets and uh, uh, go down the jetway and I say, hey, Dan's still in Miami. I'm flying the trip. I did the quick briefing and, and uh, you know, I'm in uh, my civilian clothes here and I'm sitting in the left seat and, uh, and uh, we're going to fly down to Florida and you'll get a new guy on the way back. So here I am sitting in the seat, civilian clothes. Everybody else is there. The, uh, the final agent comes down to, uh, you know, check if everything's all right and close out the door, uh, and, uh, you know, send us on our way. And she sees me sitting there in civilian clothes and she hadn't met me before. Cause normally the captain does introduce themselves to the gate agent and stuff like that, but we were, we were short on time. So I was hurrying. So she looks and she sees me sitting in the seat 
and she says, Who are you? And I said, thought of it off the top of my head, I said, I'm a Mileage Plus member, and I paid 50,000 miles to fly this trip as captain. She looks at me, and she goes, No! <laughs> and I go, No, no, no. I explained, you know, really quickly the situation. She goes, Oh, okay, okay, you, you really scared me there. So anyway, uh, that was fine. She pulled the jetway. Away we went. Uh, the captain normally flies on a thing like this, the first leg anyway. So I flew the first leg down there, and then... Uh, I gave him instruction, uh, you know, like you typically do as a first officer, first flying leg on the way back. And we got back to Chicago and they had arranged by that time a new LCA to pick it up and away they went. Anyway, that's the story of uh, 50,000 miles to fly a trip. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.